We are first now going to work another set of examples. This is uh, somewhat similar to an example we did last time, but we're going to consider it in more detail. So here's x, here's y, and I'm going to actually flip it around, so we'll use this kind of shape. And I'm going to take a few different points on the graph to give us examples of the slope. Starting on the left, we'll draw a tangent line. Uh, not the greatest tangent line. It's perhaps uh, a little bit, uh, a little bit too far to the left. Okay, so there I moved it over a little bit. And we want to ask what's the slope. Well, and I want to have a number, but I don't have any numbers on the x and y axis. So what do I do? Well, it's clear that if you pick any two points on the line and then draw a triangle that the, the rise is going to be a lot bigger than the run. How much bigger? Well, without measuring, it's kind of hard to tell. But just eyeballing it, I might say here, perhaps uh, four times bigger. Perhaps the rise is four times bigger than the run. So in other words, if this was, if this was a one, then this is a four. Now, that's just a ballpark guess. But what that would say is that the slope is four. Well, actually, here the slope is negative 4, because as we go from left to right, the function is going down, not up. And whenever the function is going down, you have a negative slope. So the slope at uh, this value of x, say this value of x here, it's about negative 4. And we should try to remember that. I'll, I'll write it over here. First slope. negative 4. How about the second one? So the second one is at this value of x. I'll draw a tangent line here. Yeah, I think that's going to happen again. Now, we can take an ar arbitrary pair of points and make a triangle on it. Now, how do we compare rise over run here? Well, here, for a given run, that is the horizontal distance, the rise is, is actually less. So, for example, this was, um, well, let's see if this was, if this was, I don't know, three, this might be, this might only be two. So it's less than one. So I'll write here a second slope is uh, I'll say it's two thirds. That's a very rough approximation, but it's 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 less than one. That's I'm sorry, it's negative two thirds because it's still still uh, slope is still negative. Things still going down. Now at the bottom here, it's actually pretty easy to see what the slope is because the line's horizontal. And so this third slope is going to be 0 because it's delta y over delta x, but there's no delta y because there's no rise. There's only a delta x. And so when you're at the bottom of this u-shaped, you get a slope equal to 0, the corresponding x-axis. X, uh, x value is about here. Let's do the fourth point. Let's say it's this, roughly this point here. So I'll draw my tangent line. And do the delta y over delta x thing again. Now here's positive, so the fourth slope is going to be a positive number. 
And in terms of the ratio, the rise to run, I don't know. I would say that the rise is about half as much as the run. So if this were a 2, this would be a 1, and so the fourth slope would be 1 half. And then finally, the fifth slope for, for this value of x. Draw that tangent line. And again, I uh, sometimes get unexpected results here. from pressing too hard on the stylus. Okay, so that's roughly the tangent line. And what is its slope? Well, we do a rise, so we'll run here. Now the rise is a lot bigger than the run. I'd say maybe it's uh, three times bigger, so then the fifth slope would be, um, would be positive three. All right, now comes perhaps the more important part of this lesson, which is actually making a graph of the slope of this function. So this is our f of x, and here I want to show the slope of f of x. So I want to graph the slope of f of x. And this is a rather unusual idea. So we'll bring the x values down. Perhaps I should have brought them all the way like this. So So you can see that it's actually the four black dots that are generating four black dots on the on the function of the upper graph that are generating this this thing on the lower graph. And now I just want to graph the slope of of f of x. Now I don't have any numbers, but I can see on the right hand side with with the numbers which are um, over here. These are the numbers I'm going to have to graph. So the smallest number I need to graph is negative 4, and the biggest number I need to graph is positive 3. So maybe the range is, uh, convenient range would be what I just drew. So the first slope is negative 4. Let's mark that so I'd have a value down here. All right. So for that value of x, the slope of f of x is minus 4. For the second value of x, the slope is minus 2 thirds. I don't know where that is, but this might be minus 2, so this might be minus 1. Oh, I'm sorry, that was wrong stroke. Minus 1. So uh, minus 2 thirds is a little bit below that. So the second point, when I have a slope that's a little bit um, closer to 0, I should say below. It's a little bit above negative 1. It's, it's closer to 0 than negative 1. Third slope is 0. So third slope is 0. That's right here. Fourth slope is a half. This is 3. Maybe this is 2. This is 1. And a half, 1 looks like what? 1 is about. So a half is roughly there. And finally, the fifth slope is 3. So 3, that would be the fifth slope. And let's connect the dots. So connecting the dots, that, that. that and like that. 
that's what the slope of f of x looks like. And it's quite clear that the slope of f of x doesn't look at all like f of x does. F, f of x up in the upper part looks like a, a u shape, and the slope of f of x looks nothing like it. Now, eventually you'll have to be able to more or less do this in your head, or do it quite quickly. Because in the middle part of the semester, it's going to be we're going to be doing this dozens of times every day when we're talking about cost curves. But for now, it's best to take it easy, step by step, slowly, and and um, systematically. Remember that you draw the tangent line, you find the slope with the tangent line, uh, and then you know what the slope is, and then you can graph the slope.